trying to get crazy with this scene. Don't you know I'm loco? That's the way I look at it now. You know what I mean? And then when I got back on the team, the first thing I booked was uh, um, Shameless. I did uh, three episodes with Shameless. Then after Shameless, it was uh, SWAT. I did SWAT. Um, FBI, uh, uh, what is it? Um, uh, FBI New York. In New York, I just did that while booking, while filming Mayans in between. <laughs> What's up, everybody? Um, this is Bobby Ruiz, <clears throat> a.k.a. Bobby Tribal, and welcome to another Lower Left Podcast. Um, we're right here at 17th and Island in San Diego's East Village at the Lower Left, and today we have a hometown dude, a dude who ran the streets of San Diego, um, has an amazing story, was able to um, find his way out. Um, his name's Joseph Lucero. Joseph Lucero, yes. And... Uh, He's also uh, he's an actor and and he's uh, on the the show on FX called Mayans, um, one of my favorite shows. Thank you. <laughs> but um, no, I'm not just saying that because you're here. But we were talking earlier, and I think this season has has been written real well. But welcome, brother. Thank you very much, um, man. It's, you got a beautiful place here, bro. <laughs> Thank you, Holmes. I I appreciate that, and um, you know we all it's a we all put in a lot of work and, and do what we can here. But it's good to have you, man. And um, I I've heard a part of your story and um. Man, I'm excited. I'm excited that you're here and, and uh you know, and congratulations on, on all you've done and, and being in the position that you're in and, and your success, you know, with the show and being on the show and, and all that you've accomplished up to now. But give us a little bit of um you know oh, sorry, that's rude. <laughs> <laughs> right here we got Johnny, our boy Johnny B. Good hey, yo, in, the, in in the house too. And uh, how you doing, Johnny? I'm doing great. I'm sweating right now. Are you? Yeah, the, the name Johnny Sweats is coming to uh, coming to uh, <laughs> yep. reality. Johnny B. Sweat. <laughs> Johnny, Johnny B. Sweat. That's yeah. right. I, I mean, my phone, he says just sweats. <laughs> <laughs> but that's my boy. But um, welcome, man. And and tell us a little bit about, you know, first of all, we'll just say uh, a little bit about your San Diego history and, um, you know, just where you grew up and, and a little bit about your family and yourself, you know, prior to, to getting into acting. Um, born and raised, uh, San Diego was born actually in the Heights. Um, pops is from the Heights. Uh, my deals were from the Heights. Um, grew up right here and right up the fucking street. I mean, Golden Hills until uh -huh. I was about 10, like 86, 87. Uh -huh. Um, and moms and pops went back to the joint. Um, and then after that, moved out East, East County, Al Cajon, but I was already juvenile hall, hitting YA. Um, I hit a, numerous fucking like just they sent me a, a right right of passage rop was a, a california youth authority alternative a wall from there mom was silent came back to san diego and as soon as i came back to san diego caught another fucking case went to california youth authority man was uh about six years almost came home uh, july 24th uh, 1996 um had no parole you know it was uh running amok on the streets at that time 96 was pretty hot um caught a case uh we were one of the first uh, individuals to hit the 186, 22A, 22B law, which uh, basically is the Street Terrorism Act. And in and, and California, had no I had no fucking no answer for this. You know, they had no, no answer to gang members. Um, faced with a lot of time, fought it for two years uh, in the county jail. Uh, ended up getting um, six with 85. Came home uh, April 8th, 2003. Uh, when I came home, I had walked away from the gang life. So a lot of people were like, ah, that fool's a fucking traitor. You know what I'm saying? Fuck him. Wah, wah, wah. I'm okay with that. You know what I mean? I was having a son. Um, and I went through a lot in that two years, you know, I was putting in a lot of work, you know, in the city, you know, and just in the, in the county itself, you know, um, and I questioned myself. I said, damn. You know, you started to see the deceit for what it really was. And everything I stood for was a fucking facade. Um, and anybody that, that, that knows the life or that lives the life that says that's not true, they're lying to themselves. And I don't judge anybody to each, each their own, right? But I said to myself, you know what? I, I don't, I don't want my son to be my Sally. Cause that's what he's going to be when he, when he gets older. If I, if I stay with all this and fucking run the game all the way to the top. And, um, 
I made a conscious decision, man. And I said, you know what? Fuck it, homie. Well, I'm gone. The homie's going to hate me, but I don't give a fuck. I'm going to be a dad. Because I tapped into myself and I said, what was the one thing that drove, drove me to the streets? It was the fact that Garga, heroin, the gang life was more important to my family than it was to me. Mm-hmm. And that shit turned me to the streets. You know what I mean? Coming home was a shooting gallery in my pad. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I live right up the street, 26, 27, 28th and Broadway. You know what I'm saying? Like, and all my deals lived in the pad. My, my, my pops, old man Ray from the Heights, like, like they sold dope all through the, through the city. You know what I mean? All the, all the homies from Lomas, I knew them all. We were all fucking GHSers at you one time. You said both, both your heifers, both your parents were, were in jail as well? Yeah. My mother and my father. Yeah. And my mother's blonde hair, blue eyes. You know what I'm saying? Uh-huh. So. They got a lot of heat. She used to catch a lot of heat from the family, from my dad's side, because, well, who's this fucking white lady coming into this, you know, ruining this and that? You know, they just hated all that. The guys hated her. You know what I mean? So, with like, I was torn between, you know what I mean? And then don't teach him Spanish because, you know what I'm saying, he's not going to be considered American when fucking he grows up. And, yeah. you know, all these things that I would hear as a kid. You know, I skateboarded up and down these streets. My dog used to pull me on the on, on, on my skateboard, bro. Like I was telling, I was telling a uh, 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 brother here earlier that I would come down B Street on my skateboard. I would walk through fucking City College all the way up to through Balboa Park and through the back of the San Diego Zoo. And to the far right, remember the old, you, you remember the zoo back in yeah, the days yeah. with the gates when they used to, they, the push gates where yeah. they used to go through? Well, to the far right, there was a bar that was a little bit higher. My head would fit. So I would slide <laughs> under that motherfucker, right? Yeah. Bro, I would do this shit like two, three times a week. Get into the zoo for free? Just get into the zoo for free. And then when I was in there, like his animals, they didn't put you down. They didn't tell you. I just, I felt safe for some reason. It was the coolest shit in the world. I was like seven, homie. Seven years old, run from all the way up here, thirtieth and Cedar, twentieth and Broadway, by, by myself, bro. And then I would get it would be dark time, and I'd be fucking. I was afraid of the dark because coming back through Golden Hills, then we used to have to go through the canyons, going going through Gold, Lomas Gold, Golden Hills Park and the wreck. Yeah. When the canyons, they were, they were finding a lot of bodies back then. Anyways, long story short, fucking when I used to be inside the San Diego Zoo, um, I used to feed myself by going to the vendors and being like, hey, that shit took my quarters and stuff. So they would give me chains and I would get ice cream and soda and shit like that. And I would walk around the zoo for hours, bro, hours. That's badass. And that's what I would do. And I'd be by myself, bro. You know what I mean? Because I didn't want to be at the pad, bro. They were slamming dope or, you know what I mean? I didn't know if they were going to raid the pad on me. You know what I mean? Like whatever it was as a kid, when I tapped into it now, you know, I can understand why, but as a kid, I was just like, fuck it, that's just life. You know what I mean? That's just how my parents are, you know? Mm-hmm. It's like going to Brooklyn, which is Brooklyn Elementary on 30th and Cedar, which is now is, I was telling him it's a, it's a Einstein prep, I believe. Mm-hmm. And they, they first introduced the, the D.A.R.E. program. And I remember, fuck, the D.A.R.E. program. Like, if you, you got drugs in your family yeah. or you got drugs at home, you need to tell us this and that. And I used to be like, I can't tell you shit. You know what I'm saying? Because... <laughs> You know, you're going to take me away from my, you know, but you want it as a kid. You want what I would see on TV. You know what I'm saying? Fucking the facts of life, silver spoons. Like, you know what I mean? Got a fucking robot as a fucking sister and shit. Like <laughs> yeah. that that cool life, bro. Like you wanted yeah. that shit. You, yeah. you didn't want the doors locked. You know, the back, you got to go take a piss in the bathroom and it's locked because you know somebody's slamming in there, if not ODing. You know what I mean? I knew how to fucking, how to, how to pop the mouth open and so they don't swallow their tongue when they're ODing on my couch. Yeah. Shit like that at fucking seven and eight, homie. You know what I'm saying? Like. It was just, it was that real life shit, bro. You know what I mean? San Diego was hot, you know? And I was just a kid. I just thought it was, that's just the facts of life, homie. That's just the way of life was, bro. Were you going to school? Did you go to elementary school and junior high and all that? I went to elementary school and junior high, bro. And then when my mom, she ended up, they raided the pad. My mom's and uh, my stepdad went to the joint. They ended up leaving my, with my real dad right here on uh, 28th and Broadway. And he was remarried and the whole family lived in the fucking house. It was like a, a seven bedroom house right here. Um, with the pond in front, all that was, was, you know, Latinos, we stay together, you know what I'm saying? So, and, but nobody took care of me, homie. Nobody's made me go to school. Nobody gave me showers, homie. My, 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 my primos, they were from Sherman. They, they would fuck with me. You know what I'm saying? Like, Hey fool, you know what I'm saying? They would call me dirt rock. You know what I mean? Like, cause I was dirty, but I didn't know what the fuck dirty was. You know what I mean? I'm just a kid, homie. I'm missing my mom. And you know what I mean? Nobody fucking liked me. You know what I'm saying? Like none of my tia, my tias were fucking like, they were just. Yeah, they weren't cool. You know what I'm saying? Because my mom, she was with us, so she they they hated now they, her. Now they all probably know you. Huh? Yeah. Oh, now now you, I get reached out all over, yeah. which I'm yeah. at peace with it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because there's no anger in me towards yeah. them. You know what I mean? Like it, it just was what it was, bro. You know what I mean? And that helped that, to make you who you are now. 
Yeah, like you even know? back then, like at days when they had Dave's Market right there on 26th and Broadway, bro. You know what I mean? The 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 OGs for Lomas, the Chicos. You know what I mean? They would always be right there. Like that's where I was always at playing Donkey Kong Junior. Had quarters lined across the top. You know what I'm saying? Donkey Kong Junior. Miss Pac Man. I'm boy, <laughs> eating the fucking when the Chester Cheetah first came out, bro. Eating the Cheeto fucking some Cheetos and a, and a 16 ounce Coke. Yeah, we used to get all the fucking uh 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 all when they were building all this shit up here. The new new spots we used to break into the um. To the fucking uh, uh, construction sites to get the the bottle the the Coca Cola bottles yeah the Coke, the the big tall ones they give you ten 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 cents a pop bam you know what I'm saying <laughs> you get yeah. fifteen yeah. twenty of them they had the handles they were like six packs of of Coke bottles we turned that shit in bro there there's your chips and soda right there that was that was how I hustled I was like seven eight years old bro damn it was uh it was something else man so but, you 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 went you did go to junior high school or how old I were did, you when you first caught a case I was nine. It was oh, nine, shit. right here, right here. It was the the Guates. I don't know if the Guates, the twins. They were from, I don't know if they're from Lomas or not. Um, I was nine, so they they. What's up, youngster? Come here, Joey. What's up? They take me to this pad over on the backside of the uh uh. What the fuck was the name of that? Um. So that's what fourth grade, like right, fourth fifth grade. No, I was even younger than that. I think it was in third grade. Wow. We had a, a, a our this dude, Mister Freeman, was that used to take us to the park right there and and play football every Saturday. Um, but these twins, they took me to the uh, what the hell was it? Alpha Beta it was behind Alpha Beta, it's like a little canyon where there was this house. They were like, "We need you to help us get our get our uh, uh bikes out of this this garage." Oh, shit. <laughs> well, I'm not knowing. They're like, "You fit yeah. through the window." We locked our keys in, homie. You know what I'm saying? So they throw me through the window. Bam! I open the garage. It was a burglary, homie. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. I, I'm here. I am jamming down the fucking street, bro, in a little ATC. But it's one of those remote control ones when they first came out, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like. You look back now, and I'm like, yeah. oh, that's the shit I was riding. Cop picks me up. They arrest me, take me to Juvenile Hall, 2801 Middle Arc Drive. I was scared, crying, like, what the fuck is this? You know what I mean? Like, had no idea I did something wrong. I was naive to that. I thought, they were, I thought it was their fucking pad, right? Yeah. What do I know? You know, I'm so damn young. Um, but I knew not to take them back to my pad because we lived on 30th and Cedar. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. My mom was selling, you know what I mean? Got to go for my pops and whoever he was connected with, you know what I'm saying, without mentioning names, but. So I knew not to take him back there. So I let him take me to wherever the station and, you know, they were being night. No, you're not a run game. You know what I mean? I already knew yeah. the E's on the license plate when they came by. And my pops used to always tell me, you see the motherfucking E in the back of the license plates. I see you see like all this shit already at seven, homie. So, and they used to run up and down Broadway, up and down Broadway. You know what I mean? Like, and so I had already like, that shit had already been ingrained in my character at such a young age. But I just, I still had dreams and just wanted to be a kid. You know what I mean? And when they got busted, I went to my dad's and that's when, um, like I was just getting neglected, I guess, in a sense. I wasn't being beat or, or anything like that. It's just, I had nobody to fucking watch me. Nobody wanted to watch me. So the school started calling this and that. Long story short, I ended up going, um, to my stepfather's house who lives in Solana Beach, La Colonia EG. Mm-hmm. And I stayed there. <laughs> shit. Probably about two weeks and his dad fucking called. CPS, may he rest in peace. He called CPS on me, and they ended up taking me, and I ended up going to Hillcrest, to the uh, to the fucking um, uh, what was it Hillcrest uh, receiving home. Mm-hmm. And then after that, I went to juvenile hall, and then my 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 tia, my tío on my mom's side of the family who were white, they came and picked me up, and I was I was too much for them to handle within two weeks, and I was just a kid. I think was just just full of fucking anger and hurt and like abandonment you know what i mean yeah. like i just wanted my mom dude that's i just wanted my mama that's yeah. like like it's simple i just wanted my mommy that yeah. that's all it was yeah you know and um but they were oh he's fucking he acts out he does he cusses he throws he breaks windows he does all this shit and i didn't guess i didn't know how to say i just want my fucking mom yeah. and i don't understand why the fuck they're in jail all the goddamn time and why i can't have my mom like so i didn't what was, understand what that. was she like with you like ooh. she was love bro my mom's loving always told me she loved me always had a roof over our heads you know what i'm saying like she just had a drug problem but she was on carga yeah bro you know what i'm saying like that that the heroin was, was her life you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. I, I believe i was her life is she still around yeah, she's still around. She got a, a little over ten years clean now, homie. Oh, she's nice. a yeah, she's she's a she's a drug counselor now, right here oh, in Chula Vista, bro. Fuck yeah, she works That's... with the court system and she gives back, bro. Like she's she's the one that inspired me to stop drinking. You know, I ended up, I stopped drinking uh, single the mile twenty fifteen, but it was actually right after that Pacquiao Mayweather fight, and mm-hmm. I woke up in jail the next morning, and you know my son looked me in my eyes and was like. How you walk away from the gang shit not giving a fuck about none of what they think 
but you can't you you can't beat this drinking mm-hmm. shit. And I was like, I'm not fucking homeless or nothing like that. But the thing is, I drink. I'm always getting arrested, mm-hmm. losing like just making more victims. And I had already changed my life. And my son basically told me, if you if you fucking drink again, I, I'm not talking to you. That broke my heart because he was the he was he was the me he was for me he was my inspiration to walk away in the first place and not care what nobody thought about me like because there's some dudes that that don't like me for the for the decision i made and i'm okay with that yeah because my son loves me bro and he graduated i mean because of his mom great great mother but i mean he graduated high school then college now he, he owns he's got about his first uh property bro like oh shit yeah dude like how like, old is he now it's 20 22 Wow, and he brought so his bought his own property, right? His, his own property, Damn. bro. Bought his own condo, bro. Right here in San Diego, oh, at that. Shit. Hey, and and it ain't cheap. No, no it's not cheap. <laughs> it's probably bro. one of the most difficult places to buy a pad. One of the probably got to be in the top five. I'd say in the oh, country. Oh, easy, bro. Like easy. That. I've been looking the last two years, yeah, bro. It's it's crazy. But it's just, and that's just, you know, if I wouldn't have walked away, even though his mother's a fucking phenomenal mom she's from she was from my neighborhood too you know she but when i went away she took on being a mom she grew up the same way i did you yeah. know what i'm saying like but she decided like there's no excuse i'm gonna fucking be this kid's mom period i'm the mom i had already left you know what i mean i was in the joint and then i came home and that's all i wanted to be i made the decision and so i had never been talked bad about nothing you know what i mean especially in the 90s wrecking crew all the homies that that, that knew me you know what i mean like but I didn't give a fuck. Yeah, it hurt. You know what I mean? I'd never been talked bad about, bro. But I was like, I'm, this is for my son. I don't ever want my son to be, I don't, it's for my kids. And I didn't know. And I, I seriously, I tapped in to the shit that, what made me go to the streets? Why didn't I used to always tell myself, well, my dad don't love me. He says he loved me, but he didn't show me shit. You know what I'm saying? He showed me that God, God was more important. You know what I mean? The homies was more important. That life was more important. And I know that's why I turned to the streets. There was something voided at my house. Yeah. You know, and I said to myself, as long as I don't do that with my son, he's going to be okay. Like, that's the blueprint to being a father in my life. Just do everything opposite of my dad did. The one thing that my dad did tell me, he's always told me, you love me. I love you, mijo. Like, he fucking never, he wasn't that machismo, fuck you, this. He was, I love you, mijo. I love you, mijo. I love you, mijo. You know what I mean? I think because he had already fucked up with my older brother, Mike Lucero, who was droopy from Encano, and my older sister, Deborah. Like, he had already fucked up with them. And he was there in his 50s, bro. He's 20 years older than my mom. My mom was copping dope from him. You know what I'm saying? That's how they linked up. And my mom was a white girl track star, homeboy, at, at fucking Patrick Henry High School. You know what I mean? Still to this day, her name was on that motherfucker. Oh, she was shit. one of the fastest white girls in fucking San Diego County. But she has her own issues with, with my grandma and grandpa on that side. You know what I mean? And why she turned to dope and that flower child shit. Yeah. You know? And then they connected with my dad, you know, Ray Lucero. And... um then I was I was born, you know what I mean. But, is he still around? No, he passed away. Uh, twenty ten. My water go. He passed away. Uh, twenty ten, bro. Um, cancer. He seen me check check this out. I, I come home from YA, um, and then I go, I go to the parole office, right? And I sit down and I see my pops. I ain't seen him in like me and Rico from Sherman Awald from Juvenile Hall. In the early 90s, and we ended up right up the hill at Grand Hill Park. And uh, I was on the run, and then that was the first time I'd seen my brother Mike. I didn't meet my brother Mike, Droopy, until I was like, like he, eight years late. I was eight years old. So that was the last time I seen my dad. It was like 90, the end of 90. So here it is, 1998, 19, no, 1997. And I walk into, right before I caught this case, and I walk into the parole office, and he's right there, and I sit down next to him, and I said, What's up, pops? And he looked at me, oh, what's up, youngster? And I was, oh, shit. And I was like, what? Like, I was like, I wanted to have tears in my eyes. Like, and I just kept, I, I flowed with it. Because I was already that, like, that homie. I was like, that shit ain't, I'm not going to let him fucking see that shit. Fuck it. I, it was like, it hit me so fast, but I, I I put that fucking shield on, homeboy. You know what I'm saying? Like, and the, the parole officer walked down and was like, Mr. Lucero, we both stood up and I looked at him, homie. He looked at me and I just walked to my parole officer because I knew he was, he was there for me, right? And he was like, who's that dude standing looking at you? And I, I turned back and my, my hit, if hit, I seen the look on his eyes. Oh shit, that's my son. And I mean, he was like, I said, I ain't got nothing to say. Let's, let's go do what we got to do. You know what I mean? Damn. I never forgot that, bro. You know, and fast forward 10 years later again, 
he sees me on Gridiron Gang, mm -hmm. the movie with the rock and exhibit. Yeah. And he fucking, uh, he reached out. You know, he was doing real bad. He asked me for some money. I sent him 1500 bucks real quick. No, no questions asked. Didn't hear if he got the money, nothing. That was About, it. That was it. About five or six years go by. Uh, he was, uh, I guess he was doing, he was living in North County. He was living at one of the, the rehabs. I guess he got clean. But then I think he found out he had cancer and it was like it's one of the late stages. And he had these like ladies call me and they fucking, they went through everything. Found me on Homeboy Industry. Found me like to get a hold of me. They got my fucking phone number. And I was like, who is this? And they told me their names. I can't remember their names. And I wish I did, but I was still resentful. I mean, and they were like, your dad wants to see you. And I was like, I tell my dad I love him, but no, nah, I. I can't keep doing this. I didn't even introduce him to my son, homie, because I was afraid of him abandoning my son or doing that to my son. My son knew my stepdad, who I didn't consider my stepdad. He's tattooed on me. Like, he was the one that stepped to the fucking plate and never called me his stepson. And he was in the same type of game. You know what I mean? He played that shit to the fullest, if not more. Um, and he treated me as my son. So to my son, my stepdad was his real grandfather. And I didn't want to put that, do that to my son. But now it's a regret for me because my dad ended up dying. And I got it in the mail that that he got, that, that he had cancer. We need to find you. I'm the next of kin or whatever the fuck they call it. And yeah. They were like, hey, you know, he died in, in, in Encinitas at the uh, at the, at the Kaiser. Or no, the, strip, the scripts right there in Encinitas. Um, so I called my sister, Deborah. My, my brother, Mike, was in, uh, he was up, I think he was in Arizona. We had to go, you know, see him. And I remember when I seen him, I was just like, I broke down in tears. Like, I said, I... I was living with this other resentment that I now resented myself. I had the opportunity to fucking to make make amends with my dad or let him allow him to make amends. And because of my fucking anger and my resentment, I fucking shut that shit down, bro. Like I can cry about it thinking about it right now because yeah. it was fucking real, dude. Yeah. Like, and I wish that I wouldn't have fucking did that because I had changed so much already. Yeah. You know, and uh it was tough, homie. It was tough, Bobby, because, you know, it, there was a lot of fucking anger. Like, fuck, homie. You know what I mean? Like, I, I love my kids. I'll die for my kids. Yeah. Like, you don't even. I gave up the gang. Like, motherfuckers talk bad about me because I didn't give a fuck. I was like, fuck that. I'm going to be a dad, homes. Like, I don't give a fuck what the homies think. Call me a lab. Call me all this shit, fool. Put your hands on me. Whole different story. I'm not that dude. Put your hands on me. Fucking whole different story. You know who I am. But that life, fuck that life. I'm cool. Dude. I just want to be a dad. And you had already done your time. Yeah, and I had already done my shit, homie. You yeah. know what I mean? And so when I came home, like, just with this whole situation, sometimes I look at my son and I'm just like, I, I wish I would have gave you the opportunity. And he gets like, no, nah, I didn't want to meet him anyways. But yeah. still, you know, I think that's his, I think it's part of him where he's like, yeah. he wants to meet him because he knows who you're a Lucero. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I'm a Lucero. You know what I mean? Like, that's... You know what I mean? That's my dad a was a great one. man. Yeah. They say he was, when I talked to all the OGs from Logan, they say he's one of the best motherfucking, uh, uh, back then, he, the fucking cement layers. Like, every, like, everybody knew him. You know what I mean? He would lay cement and he sold carga. You know what I mean? He had his own connections. So it was, uh, it was deep. You know what I mean? There, there's a, it's, it's a trip to hear the stories. You know what I mean? Yeah. People that have seen me, a lot of dudes from the Heights, they'll, they'll reach out through Instagram and be like, hey, dog, you know what I'm saying? Oh, man, raise your dad for, hey. That, that fool used to be there. You know, I'm hearing stories now, bro, that I never knew. Because I didn't know my dad, homie. It was just a facade. And and what I thought of him, you know, from what I would hear from homies on the streets and what he did. You know what I mean? Like, I didn't know the man. You know, he knew me until I was like, what, five and six. And, you know, he gave he gave me the love and always open, talked with me openly, bro. You know what I'm saying? And, uh, but yeah, that was, that was, that was a tough resentment, homie. And, um, and I shut that shit down because of it. And that's why. You know, I've I've worked so hard, you know what I'm saying, um, to forgive. Like it's it's part of my everyday, like even waking up, you know, like this morning, you know. I put it on my Instagram I start putting it on my Instagram stories like every day, you know, thank you for today. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, Amen. I'm like I I do it every day and I've been doing it every day for I don't know how many years. Like, and it's just a reminder for me, we ain't promised tomorrow, homeboy, you know what I'm saying? Like we're not even promised the next second. And whatever happened even ten minutes ago in the beginning of this conversation. I can't change it. It's right. already done. The shit don't exist no more, right? And that's the same thing about when people fucking piss me off. Like, I got to fucking embrace that shit. I got to accept that shit and fucking let that shit go. But I got to deal with this. Like, hold that shit in and release it. Because otherwise, that shit up here will fuck me, dog. Yeah. yeah. Like, that shit, will, I'll be living in, in, in with that shit in my head. An old dude in my cell, he told me, we was in a shower line one time and, and somebody did something. Homeboy, and I was, I, I took that shit back to the cell and I was like... 
The next morning I woke up now the the OG called me on it. What's up? What's up, youngster? Come down here. And I just called him Dinosaur because he was older than me, right? You know I mean? <laughs> and uh, but he was somebody, bro, and he was like, uh, how's that feel, homie? And I was like, How does what feel, homie? Said, I'm saying, like, what do you stop fucking with your fucking your 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 old school fucking Torica, homie? Shoot the what 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 did I do, dog? What yeah. did I do wrong? Tell me what the fuck I did wrong. He's always telling me what I did wrong. And he was like, How'd you feel going to sleep with another man on your mind? <laughs> I was like, "Fuck you, homeboy. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I don't swing that way, homie." And he yeah. was like, "That's not what I'm saying, homie. The fact that you let that other man fucking control your fucking mm-hmm. emotions that you couldn't even sleep, and it made so much sense. I gave that dude my energy, homeboy, the whole night. That dude's probably having a great night, loaded, whatever. And instead, because I kept fucking obsessing on that fucking what I felt was disrespect, and I didn't jump right then and there." You know what I mean? Because you got the Gunners, Mini 14s right there. Like, I just let it go. Bam, cool. But that shit stayed in my mind and took up my whole fucking night. And it was little things that like like that that I, I wasn't aware of. And he made me aware of that shit. And he was like, be aware of that shit. Don't give nobody your fucking energy, homie. I've been here 25 fucking years, bro. He goes, you're still young, got a lot to live. You got a date. You know, and that shit sticks with me, bro. You know what I mean? And it's progress before perfection, no doubt. I make fucking mistakes all the all the time, bro. But... I try to be humble enough and open-minded enough to hear the, the those old sayings and those visuals. Like when I close my eyes and I see them times, bro, when he, when you got 24, you know, you know they, yeah. they talk about, you know, we get, you know, 23 and one. Fuck no, homie, you ain't get no 23. By the first two, it gets racked to go out there, homie, the yard's down. You know what I mean? So you're bird bathing, homie, you know what I'm saying? So might as well be on lockdown for six months. It, it ain't no fucking, you know what I mean? Like. Yeah. So when, that, when, that, it, oh, go ahead. Go, when, when was the last time that you were locked up? Like, when when were you released? And I was released uh, April eighth, two thousand and three. So since then, it's been it's been a, a good ride, except for that one. So except for that single in my own. Yeah, no, no, right? no. See, I take that back. I, when I say locked up, I'm thinking doing time. No, fuck no. I've been I've been I had to fight. I fought life two times since then, because I'm a two striker, and anything I do. They want to give me all day. So when my dad died, we, we buried him. We got fucking hammered. I mean, blackout hammered. Um, we ended up coming to the college area by state, and my fucking brothers got into it with somebody, you know. And I sat back, snatched him up, made sure the kid was okay. Well, here I am, a two striker, such and such from somewhere, and they're, they're still putting me on the. They hit me. They arrest me. I'm faced now. I'm faced because they kicked him down. Now it's a strong arm robbery because his beer got lost. I guess somebody took his fucking beer. They charged us with it. So it's a strong arm robbery and a GBI. So that's a third strike for me right away. Twenty four to life. I had to fight that shit six months. You know what I mean? What's a GBI? Great bodily injury. So in fucking preliminary hearing, fucking uh, the witnesses, his friends that got beat up said not. Nah. When they pointed me out, they were like, "Yeah, they, you see the guy in the hearing?" And they were like, "Yeah," and I'm like. Fuck. He's going to point me out. I'm going to, and I didn't do shit, homeboy. Not a fucking a thing. Striker. I'm already a two striker, bro. And I, I didn't do nothing. He says, no, that dude right, that dude right there actually helped my friend up, held them up, stopped the other dudes from stomping there his face go. and fucking said, do you need me to take you to the hospital? Are you all right? You know what I mean? And kept saying, they're just drunk. They're just drunk. Hey, let it go. Blah, blah, blah. And then my, his friend, he's talking, my friend came and swung on me and I just ducked and dropped him. But it wasn't because of beating them guys up. This is them. Nobody's ever spoke up and told the truth to where it's in my favor. It's always like, yeah, he fits the description. That's him. See, that's a trip because uh, I, I would think they would have told the investigators that, and it would have, wouldn't have gotten to that extreme. You know what I mean? But I then, think they it, did tell the investigators, and, and, and that's sh- what I'm saying. Like, like the DA and the cops. You know, they don't care. They, they don't give a fuck. Wanted, they wanted, they wanted to railroad yeah, me. They knew yeah. they could get that out of me. Yeah, no doubt. So then, when that happened, I they I ended up fucking taking a, a, a fighting in public misdemeanor. They didn't even want to let me walk out free. The, D, the 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 judge was like, "This ain't no fucking life case." He was like, "This is the wrong case, the wrong place at the wrong time." The second time I'm down here, I'm the. Uh, uh, the bouncer for Sevilla and uh, Meze with Joe and fucking uh, yeah. the boys, right? So this dude's whooping his old lady's ass. So they come and get me. Um, I get in the middle, bring her in the fucking bar, blah, blah, blah. Dude comes out getting big, big motherfucking dude, homie. You know, he's running his mouth. I'm in a suit and tie. I, 
you run in your mouth doesn't do nothing to him. You can call me all names in the book. You know what I'm saying? All I'm watching for is that that trigger. You know what I'm saying? Just that movement, your shoulders, and see what you're going to do. Once I see that, then I'm going to defend myself. So as I'm walking, I walk her to the Marriott where she said she was staying because my manager told me to. And he's, fuck you, you're trying to fuck my old lady, blah, blah, blah. All these fucking things, right? As soon as we get her in, the security's right there. Bam, she walks in. As soon as I turn to walk back, he jumps in my way and his shoulders shift. Cause I'm, he's in a step cause he steps, you know what I mean? He's about to blow. So I just dropped it. Bing, hit him one time. Well, what I fucked up is when I hit him, he hit the floor. He hit his head on the ground and his brain. I didn't know his head started to hemorrhage. So I, I walked away at this time cause she comes running out screaming, fuck me, fuck me. And I'm like, in my mind, like, I just like saved you and walked you back. Cause my boss told me to, she ran back out the thing. So I had confiscated some Coke. Um, from some girls and just told her just leave the fucking club you know what I mean and I had it in my so pocket so you were to working give as a security yeah I was, the, I was the bouncer oh, right okay. here so I ended up getting for that case they charged me uh, with another fucking assault with a deadly weapon uh, and fucking GBI so it turned out this dude was a fucking uh, a pimp from fucking Vegas and she was uh, uh, one of his one of his broads <laughs> so but I had to go to I had to go to fucking preliminary again you know what I'm saying? My boy Raymond and Dave, they, they paid for my attorney. You know, I'm stressed out. Like, they're talking about 27 years to live. The dude's got Fuck. fucking brain hemorrhage. And I'm like, who? Like, how the f- I'm doing my fucking job. Like, it, it wasn't no, I didn't, dude was going to strike me, homie. I seen it. I felt it being, I just, that was it. And I walked away. Went to prelim. They fucking, uh, uh, the security guards and the camera showed everything. Which saved my ass, and the fucking the the judge was a Catholic priest, and he told me after after I felt like I was like cool, and they were like the the chick she showed up, the dude didn't show up, so he wasn't showing up, so that that showed right there who he was. She showed up, and she she picked out because I'm in a suit and tie, granted, bro, and she 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 was she was it fucked her up. She picked out my attorney. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? It was Sorry. like yeah, that's the one. That's and and you. Let it be for record that he picked out a, I forget my attorney's name at the time. He was a paid attorney. That's, that's who it was. So the, after the judge goes off the, off the, he goes, this is off the record. He looks at me. He says, Joseph Lucero. He goes, you're a two striker. He goes, what the fuck? And he cuss, what the fuck are you doing? You're in the wrong place at the wrong time, but it's your fucking fault. You're in that wrong place. What the hell are you doing as a bouncer? What the hell are you doing in that environment? Why would you put yourself in that position? Cause this is the shit that's gonna happen. You know how you know the way the cases are. Like he schooled me. Never the judge ain't never give a fuck about nobody. You know what I mean? And it opened my eyes, and I walked away from that. And that's when I started to stop trying to drink. Mm-hmm. And then the next time I drank was Cinco de Mayo. After that, uh, well, it wasn't Cinco de Mayo. It was the third. And that's that's pretty much when your son told you that that he would disown you if you continued drinking. The, is that when your life started to really transition? Yes, again. I had already made it to Hollywood and all that shit, but I had fucked Hollywood off. You know what I mean? Because I was drinking and partying, and I thought that's, that's how you do Hollywood. I wasn't gangbanging, wasn't carrying a strap, wasn't robbing nobody, wasn't banging on fools. I, didn't give a f- I figured that the party life is how you do it. Like That's how you do it in Hollywood. You know what I mean? How did you make it? How, so in, in regards to the acting, how did you get into acting, and how did you eventually make it make it to Hollywood? So I worked at uh, in LA. I worked at Homeboy Industries, and I was a gang counselor out there for about shit from two thousand four to two thousand nine. Um, was it? It was July, June twenty, June nineteenth, six nineteen. Oh the, shit! Yeah, June nineteenth, six nineteen. Right. That was the day that I <laughs> I came back to Six-19 San Diego. Day. Yeah, and then I ended up getting shot. August 23rd, four times uh, in 2009, like three months later, right? Coming back to this. Fuck. It was crazy. Yeah, it was crazy, so bro. you were already on the right path, and then you came back to San Diego, and then you ended up getting shot four times. Because my when my dad, my stepfather, who I don't like to use that term stepfather because I consider him my real father because right. he was the one that stayed with me, um, he got pancreatic cancer. <clears throat> and at that time... Like I started drinking bad, bro. Because to watch somebody die of pancreatic cancers, man, I, I just I, I can't even fathom the fucking pain. They gave him sixty days. He lasted six months. You know, you're doing you're talking about a dude that 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 slammed Gadaga, you know, for years, and he was using like two hundred fifty, five hundred milligrams of morphine that wasn't even taking the pain away. You know, he wake up in the middle of the night and he had a catheter in him for six fucking months, Holmes. You know what I'm saying? Like, and wouldn't ask for help, nothing. You know, he got all kinds of, you know, homies coming to the pad, giving their last, you know, loves. That was, 
I didn't, I didn't deal with that shit. I suppressed all that fucking anger. You know what I mean? Just hatred towards, towards cancer and why him? Like, what the fuck? Everybody I love is, is doing them watching my, my baby brothers too, who's their real father. And just watching all that, I just started to slowly tailspin down without even knowing it. You know what I mean? And, uh, my, the only, the only beauty out of this is my daughter, Brooklyn, was born. You know, he died April 5th. 2008 my daughter brooklyn was born november 18 2008 and i i got came back to san diego 619 2019 and got shot august 23rd it was it was the uh it was fucking um the cardinals and chargers uh uh fucking um pregames uh what is it tailgate no the first four the first four games the fucking um i can't think oh, of the preseason preseason thank you and uh my 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 brother um his homeboy was on the run Right there in La Mesa, and uh, I ended up driving in. These uh, these individuals almost ran him over because I was faded. You know what I mean? I told them my bad. I'm sorry. Blah blah blah. They, they didn't take it away from blah blah. Well, fuck where I'm from, my boy. You know what I'm saying? Like, is there a problem? You know what I mean? Like, I already said I'm sorry. Type shit. You know they they were like, nah, cause this blah blah blah, whatever. So that got squashed. Well, my pride got in the way. I circled around. They came down. I jumped out. In my mind, I was like, I'm going to fuck this dude up. You know what I mean? His boys would probably mop my ass all over the place. But I'm fucking this dude up. I already told him I'm sorry. He wants to, you know, call all these names. Because I was drunk. As soon as I went to hit him, he pulled out. Blah, 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 blah. You know? Yeah. Really, that all eight. What year was that? That was uh, 2019. Oh, shit. August 23rd. Or 29. 2009. Oh, sorry. I was going to say, 2009. Fuck, that was two years ago. No, no. 2000, yeah, 2009. 2009. August 23rd. Homie. And, uh... Yeah, that was that. That changed my life. Let, let you me, think? Let, well, it didn't change because I still kept drinking and even tailspin more. Where'd they hit you at? Uh, twice through the arm, one through the back, two through the knee. So it blew through like like I my tricep is gone here, hit here, blew out here in the back, and I was like two eighteen, like I was I was pretty stocky, and because all the bar work I was doing the next day, the doctor told me the one that lodged in my lat saved my life because that's the one that should have went through and bounced through my chest. And should have blew all my organs up. But this kid, just he just was shooting. And I, he spun me around. And there was video of all this shit. You know oh, what I mean? Because the cops came and the, dude, the Mesa PD came and had me. I was leaking everywhere. And I made two phone calls. One to uh, the mother of my kids and one to my mom. And I said, look, I'm hit. I'm leaking. But I'm breathing. And I think I'm okay. Click. And I made the next <laughs> call to my mom. The same thing. Click. And then the cops, the Mesa PD, their SWAT came. There were three back to back, back, three, three, three. So there was nine of them. Get on the fucking ground. Get on the fucking ground. And I just remember just being like, I can't, I'm fucking leaking. I, I can't even fucking move, barely. I'm sitting on the curb. I'm, I got white Jordans on, fucking, uh, uh, I think I had some Sean John fucking baby blue shorts on, homeboy. And like, it was all red, like all my J. And that's when I realized I had started to realize, damn, I'm fucking hit bad. I mean, it was a pool of blood. It's like when you burst open a fucking water balloons and shit. And it's and just a puddle of water. They didn't even help you. They didn't give, they didn't a, fu give a they fuck. They thought, they because I'm all blasted, so I had no t-shirt on. I just got shorts and my shoes on. They're showing up to a shooting. I'm the fucking victim. My my brother's inside my Lincoln Blackwood out the fucking sunroof yelling, we're the ones that called you. He's the fucking victim. They didn't give a fuck. They came. They could have shot me. Then they cuffed me, left me left me right there leaking. Oh, oh, fuck. They put me in the back of the, uh, the ambulance. The, the ambulance driver or the, the paramedics, like, you take these cuffs off him. So the cop's like, nah, nah, he's a documented gamer. No. So they roll me over. He's looking. He's like, all right. What do you say? Entry, exit, entry, exit, entry, exit, entry. And he fucking rolls me over again. And he fucking rips up my shirt. He was like, take these fucking cuffs off. We got one lodged in his back and maybe in his chest. And that's when I fucking started to get anxiety. I was like, and I guess my breathing started to trip. And he was like, take these cuffs. This will take both my, I'm cuffed behind my back at this. Takes one of them out, puts cuffs, cuffs me to the side of the fucking thing. Whatever, dog. Like, I was, a, I was awake for the whole surgery, you know? And uh, fuck, one sheriff held my hand, homeboy. He was like, and I remember, like, and I was like, they were digging in my back, bro. Cut me open to fucking, to get this, the, the slug out of my back. Because the slug got stuck in in the muscle mm -hmm. on this side, um, but that saved you. That fucking saved me, bro. The doctor came the next day to tell me that shit. I was all on morphine and or whatever, but dilated and shit like that. And he came to tell me, and he was just like, you know, whatever workouts you do, you know, the muscle in your back. He goes, had had you not been working out, you'd be dead right now, son. He goes, I just want to, I want you to know that. 
He goes, because I pulled it out and you, you have a thick ass muscle right there. And that's what saved your life. And that's always stuck with me, you know, for whatever that's worth. Yeah. You know what I mean? But that wasn't enough for me to change or stop drinking. I had already changed from the gangbanging life. But the drinking aspect, I would become a fool. Me and you were out there drinking. Somebody walks in between us and doesn't say, excuse me. I'm ready to tell them, what the fuck? You know, I, yeah. you don't have no respect. Who the fuck am I yeah. to demand anything from anybody else? Yeah. And this is and sober. I can, I can, I can do that fine. That shit doesn't get to me. When I'm drinking, I'm usually fun as fuck until somebody does something. And that's what I wasn't staying aware of, bro. So what, when do you think at what point your outlook changed and, and your perspective changed on that sort of a situation? Because you just said before that, yeah, you would have just popped off. It would have just fucking it was on for just whatever pendejada that, that would happen. And now you're like, well, what fuck? Who am I? Like you, your perspective, like your ideology, the way you perceive situations has obviously changed. When and what do you think changed that? My sobriety. Yeah. And when I actually truly started the healing process. To be able to heal, to understand where the pain comes from, that it was, I did what I did. You know what I mean? And what the life that I was given, like it's nobody's fault. Because they were living, my mom was living her best life that she knew. My dad was living his best life that he knew. You know what I mean? I respect addiction. And I had to learn about that shit in order to respect it. You know, if there's a, a, there's a, there's a fucking, obviously there's, there's a plug outlet somewhere. I know I'm not going to lick my finger and stick my fucking finger in that motherfucker, right? It's going to fucking probably shock the shit out of me and may kill me. Right. So it's the same thing with addiction. You know what I'm saying? Like, I had to respect the addiction that it was my mom. I know my mom, sober, loves me. I know my dad, sober, loves me. You know what I mean? But the addiction takes us somewhere else. And for me, when I got sober, I started to slowly but surely heal my fucking, my wounds, like my resentments, my anger, and all the fucking finger pointing that I pointed on all my loved ones that I got this life the way I got it. Like, I started to fucking own that shit, man, and saying it's okay. You know what I'm saying? Look where I'm at. It's made me who I am. You know, this this journey has been fucking beautifully fucking crazy, but I'm alive. I'm a, There's a reason I'm alive. You know what I'm saying? That I'm not dead. There's a reason I'm not doing all day, that I'm not in the fucking shoe for the rest of my life, or I'm not in prison for the rest of my life, and I'm, I didn't die when that, that, that guy shot me. And I'm, there's a reason I'm here. There's a reason. I know it's to be a dad, but when it came to like my whole life of wanting to give back, how the fuck am I helping other gang members find worth in themselves? But when I drink, I'm getting into brawls. Right. I hadn't let go of that, but I didn't see it when I was under the influence because they would say, my dad, they, my mom tells me, you have the Indian blood in you like your dad. You fucking black out. I don't drink to have a cup. I don't know what that is. People say, let's go have a beer with fucking dinner. No, I'm not going to fuck my fucking drinking up with no food. You know what I'm saying? Like, what are you talking about? Yeah. That's at the end of the night, homeboy. You know what yeah. I mean? If I'm not fucking coked out or running around with some, you know, some broads or whatever. You know what I mean? Like. And that was the way I, th I think it. You know, I thought it. If I'm going to eat something, I want a glass of milk or water. You know what I'm saying? With well, my dinner, I don't want a beer. Shit, it's, if it's beer, I'm getting faded. You know what I mean? We're going to have a party this motherfucker up all night, you know, trying to outdo each other. Um, but I didn't, I didn't think that fucking alcohol was my fodder to the fucking last T, homeboy. I was like, I don't slam God, God. I don't fucking do crystal. I don't do none of this fucking dope. You can't take fucking alcohol. So in alcohol. your eyes, you were already sober. Yeah. Besides, so alcohol, does, you don't consider that shit a drug. And you were trying to convince yourself, like, I'm good. I only drink. Exactly, bro. And there's people that say that all day. Like, no, I'm, I'm good. I'm, I'm completely sober. I only smoke weed or I only drink or whatever. I've heard that all kinds of times. Yeah. People just think is they're not doing, you know, pills or, or cocaine or heroin or whatever, then they're sober. Yeah. But because it's, it's what's maybe legal. Yes. You know, or the legalities the of legality it. The legality of it. So then um, going back to, Fuck, dude. So then how did you get back to Hollywood? That's the thing. I had my agent let me go because at this time I was, wasn't showing up Just to auditions. Up. I was like, fuck it. You know, making I was hung over. Be like, fuck it. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, I was uh, I couldn't make it because of this. It became excuse after excuse until finally so it was you, like, you got fuck an, you. You got an agent through working at Homeboy Industries? No, I got an agent through booking Gridiron Gang. Oh, okay. And I saw on Gridiron Gang... Um, Leon Ripley, uh, who played uh, uh, Hilga on one of the councils on Gridiron Gang, and then uh, Mo McCray, who was the quarterback, they both spoke up for me, and I ended up getting with the agent I have still to this day. Now they took me back, which is Green and Associates, Michael Green, Azeem Chiba, Kieran McCaffrey. Um, 
not, and that's who I'm with now. And they've seen this transition in me. They've seen me fucking hit rock bottom and they've seen me fucking humbly fight back and ask, you know what I mean? For an, I humbly asked them and I proved to them. You know, the first audition they sent me, they're like, oh, we're going to give you a shot. I went for Ant-Man and damn near fucking got that fucking job, but they gave it to, uh, I, I don't know the Latino dude, the dude's name, but he's, uh, he's the one that did uh, fucking um, Crash. It was his first thing. He's dope. He's big time. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's yeah, big yeah. time now. Fucking. It's, um, it's not it's not Jacob Vargas. No, it's, no, it's, it's not it's, Jacob. I, I know what you're talking about. And he's a real good actor. He's a great actor, a real bro. Real good actor. Gr- yeah. Great actor. Is, but is that the guy? Sandra Bullock was in that, right? San, no, was she? I don't know. I didn't watch Wasp. That's what I, I, I mean, not Wasp, but uh, uh, Ant Man. I wouldn't even watch it. No, if no, I didn't book no, him, no. I wouldn't watch uh, it. Uh, Crash. Yeah, I think so. Sandra Bullock was in Crash. Yeah, yeah fucking and that Sandra dude, Bullock. That dude played like a, a plumber. Uh, yes. Yeah, or he was And she like didn't that. want him. She thought he was in a fucking, like, break, uh, make yeah. doubles at the didn't key. Didn't he go, go on, that same actor, which I don't remember his name, didn't he go on to play uh, Cesar Chavez? Yes. He, he did, did, yeah. Yeah. What's yeah. his name? Um, I'm looking at Michael Pena. Michael Pena. Yeah, that Pena. dude's bad. He's funny he's as hell, too. He's a fucking badass actor. Okay, so you got you got your you got your team back. And then you started doing auditions? Started doing auditions. Um started coming close. Uh uh that dude was that Michael Mondo, you ever watch uh, Better Call Saul? Yeah. So I read I watched for, a couple episodes of that. So Michael Mondo it became between me and him. So this is where where this was my last downfall before I, I got sober. Um, they do this thing we, we test. So, like, say you want me and him mm-hmm. for the for your for your TV show. It comes so that you book us up. We sign a contract, and I sign this contract six years, starting off at twenty five thousand an episode, guaranteed thirteen episodes. I'm like, what the fuck? I'm already buying the house. Seven, <laughs> seven, no, serio, seven, yeah. seven, eight percent increase yeah. every year if the show keeps going. Like I was like, oh, I was already, you know what I mean? You're then, rich. Oh, they were like, <laughs> and they were telling me, oh, you're gonna get that shit. Like you're you're the real deal. Like that's they they love you. You know what I mean? And it came back, and they went with the other guy. That shit. I had never done that. Like I was like, oh, I went through a state of so, depression. So you both shit. like film like a pilot or whatever. Yeah, we film a pilot, and they and they went they, with his because he has more. Was that? That's better call Saul. Oh, okay. So he had a he had a he just I was more of the homie look, you know what I mean, as the cartel dude that 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 they wanted, but he had like he's he's got great. He's just dope. Period. He's dope too. You know what I'm saying? But what it said for me is I just wasn't ready yet because I was still drinking. Mm-hmm. That's the way I look at it now. You know what I mean? And then when I got back on the team, the first thing I booked was uh, um, Shameless. Mm-hmm. I did uh, three episodes with Shameless. Then after Shameless, it was uh, SWAT. I did SWAT. Um, FBI, uh, uh, what is it? Um, uh, FBI New York. In New York, I just did that while booking, while filming Mayans in between. And I've been on Mayans. Uh, we started, I booked it in 2017, our first uh or 2018. Did did you go up against anybody for that role? For in Mayans? Mayans? There was a there was there was a lot of us. Bro. Of there was a ton want, of us. Want to be on Mayans? Yeah, there there was a lot of us. Like um, you know there there's I was there with JD. Was there with Richard, um, Rocco. All I was everybody that was there. There was a bunch of other people that that did make it that were there too. And there was a couple brothers that that were there like Joey. Yeah, I heard you guys talk with the yeah, Abachi, yeah, Abachi. He's homie. and Joey yeah. was he was part of us too. Yeah, he played in Yuki. In the beginning, yeah, in the in the very first one, he, in the first pilot, he played Yuki. Yeah. Um. And when when that happened, then it went to network, and network was like, cut these guys. And unfortunately, he didn't make that yeah. cut. He's a Joey's a great guy. He's a great. He's dude, a great man. dude. Shout out Joey Abreu. Yeah, big time. He's Joey Abreu and his, he's, his family. Yeah, beautiful he's, family. Yeah, bro. he's a real good dude. He's a he's the dude that does a El Arabachi truck, and also a good actor. I've seen him. Um, an American, I think, I know Richard did American Crime. Yeah. So the, I mean, Richard Carbral, who is, a fuck man, for lack, just he's a amazing actor he's very amazing he, bro. he is not just because and and from what i see right now and i always tell people i don't see everything i don't know everything i just know what the fuck i see and that dude's probably the best one of the best actors i don't give a fuck if he's chicano or not just actors in general this dude carries some shit yeah like he's uh he he just dives all the way in. You see it in his face, all the man. way in, and, bro. And I know he he got an award. I think it was for American Crime. Yeah, he well, he got put up for an Emmy. 
did he get an Emmy? For he didn't American get the Crime? Emmy. No, he didn't and get then, again. And then you know. and then it happened again, right? When he, he went up a couple times, yeah, right? went up again. But it, it was not. It, it was for your consideration. Um, and and uh, what was it season two? But looking at his character this season, so I'm <clears throat> going back to. I'm not sure if I said this already, but because I might have said it before. You know, we started the podcast, but this season of Mayans is by far the best one so far in my opinion um you could tell that it's written differently it's uh the crew just seems just everything about it the way it's shot the intro is amazing the intro is actually making a strong political statement if yeah. people really pay attention to what's going on at the introduction to the mayans the credits yes and um it's a it, the crew looks like it's just it's dialed in man like just the story's good the crew looks good um it seems like a real cool place to work like that set just seems like it would be a, a cool set how is the set like how, how what's the vibe like and what's everybody like to work with the set's dope bro the it brothers like the brothers it. and the sisters are dope bro everybody is fucking grateful this year was tough only because it was uh covid yeah you know we're testing monday wednesday friday um we shot it for six months since october um and you know what we made it through the season bro which was the hugest thing bro but it was just this year was something beautiful elgin james created this environment of love of family um of truth of real storytelling and giving us as artists the opportunity to portray the truth as we bring it behind the choices that we make you know so each and every individual uh character that's played by somebody has embodied these stories as themselves you know from jd to richard to clayton um to to frankie to clayton to clayton um to gilly um to myself you know um and just brought it to life. But to be able to speak openly, to converse about all the all the dialogue, all the scenes, um, without fear of somebody, no, it's going to be fucking this way and that way. You know, there's just a, it's a real openness, which you don't really get. And we're all Latino, too. Yeah. You know what I mean? Which is, you know, fuck, I don't give a shit about race. I don't, I'm not prejudiced, nothing. You know what I'm saying? But it's a beautiful fucking thing to be able to tell a Latino story with Latino characters, Latino cameraman, Latino boom fucking guys, yeah. even our catering, catering is Latino, like to have our people. And this is nothing against no other race. It's just a beautiful thing to tell this story with authenticity yeah. from the people that have the lived experience. And I think that's one thing that, um, you know, obviously I've always told people like my dad's always like, yeah, I saw this movie and it just doesn't seem it's fake or the story, whatever. Anything to be entertaining, you have to put sauce on it. There yeah. has to be, it's a, it's got to be entertaining. You know, everybody's life's not that exciting, but it's a really well written story. And from what you're saying, and I see that like from beyond the opening credits, the artwork, the graphics, you know, you look at the way that, that it's being marketed, like some of the, I don't know, some, um, my friend Gustavo was telling me about, I've, I don't know who the artist is, but there's some amazing artists that are actually contributing to the graphic design, um, you know, the, the logos, just the artwork, the visuals that help promote Mayans. And then of course the bikes, you know, the wardrobe, the way that it's shot. Yeah. The clubhouse, the shit that's on the walls, the way that that it's done is uh, it seems something that a lot of us can relate to. And it's something different for us. Like it, it, it it's closer. Like those are some dudes that, you know, and if they were real motherfuckers, they uh, like dudes I would hang out with yeah. or dudes that we would all hang out with. They just seem like cool motherfuckers. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, oh, yeah, I could see any one of, you know, their character walking in and on any day and, you know just uh they seem like real real people and that they're acting you know the acting's good and um you know the some of the characters the dude that i forgot his character name but the guy that the both the dudes that look like straight indios um, fucking raul raul yeah he, and then the Apocalypto. other dude the one that the one that's still on the loose <laughs> as of this last episode yeah he so, was he's a deep actor so bro. right now when we're recording this we're I just saw, I mean, last, what episode is going to be shown tomorrow? 
Uh, next episode will be episode seven. Episode seven. So up to episode <clears throat> episode six got me because they they got a little revenge on this last one. There was some f- serious fuck yous. It's on this this next one that's gonna air tomorrow. Um, I'm really looking forward to it just to see what the fuck happens. Yeah, you know. Yeah, the, the this this whole season has just been explosive from the gate. It's been, it's been really good, and and not just because you're on here, but there's two shows that I that I look forward to every every week, and it's like I said, Snowfall, which is an amazing show. Uh, shout out to my homeboy Tone because he kept telling me that I got to get on it, <laughs> had to get on it. So I've been watching Snowfall for a while. But Snowfall's badass, great show. Um, John Singleton, John like Singleton, John Singleton, Singleton piece, baby, yeah. the way same thing, the way that's shot, the way that's acted, the characters, just um, great acting, and Mayans, like the because I could relate to to both those shows. I don't, you know, I do, I guess I don't know if I do watch a lot of TV or I don't, but those are the two shows that that I really dig. Um, you know, there's there's some like the, the lo- another local cat that he's on the show occasionally is Rick Raw. Yeah. Rick. Real good dude, and I, I know raw you know, leather. Oh, yeah. yeah, that's Shout why I started Rick. seeing the leather on the show. I'm like, I wonder if Rick did that, you know, because you see it in the on the. There's on another the dude that does it too. Soul slick, soul oh, yeah. slick leather. He's yeah, a, yeah. He uh, yeah, that did all our cases, our, our, yeah, our knife he's cases. He's done some stuff for me too. That's not. There's. T- uh, that's is that Jackie? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah, he he did some stuff for me too. Okay, real oh, good, Jackie real good boy. Dude. Yeah, Jackie boy. But, <clears throat> so what? Um. You know, what are some of the highlights? Like, what just being able to work on this project? Like, it's it's obviously you know been a. It seems like it'd be a lot of fun. Or it's it's been. I mean, since since the the dad booked it, it's just been fucking unbelievable. You know what I mean? It's um <clears throat> reinstilled my walk. You know what I mean? I wouldn't have did this if I wasn't sober. You mm-hmm. know, if I didn't get out of my own way, stop making fucking excuses and pointing the finger at everybody else. I just clean my own backyard every day. I wake up. I'm grateful. Thank you for waking me up today. You know what I'm saying? Let me have the compassion and open mindedness to treat everybody the same, you know, with love and understanding. You know what I mean? Like I have my relationship with God, but I wouldn't have this if I wouldn't have got out my own fucking way, bro. You know what I'm saying? Um, but to work with these brothers, man, today in, day out for three seasons has been fucking beautiful, bro. And my kick is like, <clears throat> Like I got a picture of fucking flocks in that motherfucker. I seen that. That fucking uh, shout that, out that, yeah, shout out flocks. That fucking it's ch- on the wall that Chencho in the painted. Right? No, it's on the wall in oh, no, Clayton's in, in Clayton's is, apartment. Is, is that what it is? Yeah. yeah. So then, and then I got Chencho. Fucking, he painted the bike. So he yeah. painted Bishop's bike and he painted Coco's bike. Oh shit. Um, he painted uh some more, but you'll see as as the season goes on. You yeah. know, if that if that portrays or not, but like just to get Chencho in that shit. You know what I'm saying? Like. Yeah. Bringing in the hometown, trying to get the hometown in there. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, because that's where my heart's out is trying to give any type of fucking inspiration to our people. And I don't just mean Latino. I mean, from the ghetto that come from shit, dysfunction that can fucking me. You can make it. You're worthy to be. You know what I mean? You're worthy to be on this fucking shit with me. Let's do it. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, and that's, that's all I give a fuck about, bro. Fuck going to the joint. Fuck putting in work. Fuck blasting fools. Fuck sticking fools. Fuck all that bullshit, huh, boy? Let's do something that you're going to love. Them barbecues that feel so good with our people. Let's fucking do that shit. But because we worked hard for it. You know what I mean? We've got so many people making so much money off our culture. Why not do it ourselves? We're, we're the originators. We're the fuck. We're the authenticity behind it. You know what I'm saying? But we got to learn what controls us. So does that show uh, involve, like, what percentage do you think the cast and crew is actually Chicano or Latino? Oh, fuck. A huge. I'm 70, 80. No maybe. shit. Yeah, fuck yeah, homie. That's badass. Uh, like, huge, bro. From casting to fucking uh, 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 the wardrobe to the lighting, the electrical, the Teamsters. Um, well, that's what that's what I'm probably feeling or seeing. And and that's maybe because maybe because a, a lot of shit that we all see on TV are like this is some bullshit, man. Like, or it's cliche, or yes, it's, you know, the dialogue is just overacted. Like, you know, dudes, it's everything. You know, people playing homeboys and gangsters, and and you know, maids and gardeners, and all this kind of shit that that we always see. And it's good to see something on television that is genuinely relatable. And, and and I don't know that there's another show that I've seen on television that that uh, as a Chicano from you know 
Southern California or, or just involved in the culture. And obviously that biker culture is around us all anyways. Yeah. And, and, you know, dudes ride bikes and low riders and, you know, Chicanismo with, you know, the whole family structure and the, the energy that you feel in that show is relatable. You know, there was a show that I saw on Netflix <laughs> that was okay. Um, that I enjoyed. It was, it was about, uh, gentrification, gent, hentified, hentified. hentified that yeah. was pretty cool. That, yeah. was, that was a pretty cool show. And, and I thought that was, that was well written. But for me, it's exciting to see because, you know, when I, when I went to school, I studied film and television, things like that and photography and, and being able to finally fucking see some rasa. Like you, you, you're, you know, we've seen, like you were saying earlier, all the, you know, the polished, you know, nice Brady Bunch type white families and, you know, the shows about Asians. I think the only other show that was out there that had a Chicano that became successful was the George Lopez show. George and Lopez, you can correct yeah. me if I'm wrong, but that's the only one that, that comes to mind. Yeah. You know, they, it was great to see the homies, you know, cartoon and Esteban make, make some noise on Netflix and, and do something really, really cool on Netflix. Yeah. With the LA, yeah. LA originals. Oh yeah. So, you know, this is a part of a movement that hopefully continues to to progress and to and to grow and and to to tell our stories and and to you know whatever it is it's a you know these are stories these are these are made for entertainment but obviously what we want to see is that element of reality to make the stories convincing and and to be able to follow the stories going like oh shit yeah that's that sounds cool that that's cool that's cool that you know that there's all this the real elements that are incorporated into these projects to make them feel, you know, real. I don't think that's I, me. Is it? It's not me. But it's not I, have a, I have a question. How I know earlier you mentioned like people were hating or, you know, one thing about our culture and our people is we always want to bring each other down. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, oh, he thinks he's bad or, oh, so what? I did this or whatever. How, how do you, how has that been? On, on that end, as far as you or the show in general, or you know, especially online, right? So many people talk shit online. It, you know, it's it's easy to get behind a keyboard and you know say whatever because yeah. you're not actually looking into the eyes of that individual. Um, how how has it been as far as the the TV show, you know, itself, um, and then like yourself, and you know, generally like with your own personal life. You know, I learned. If you're going to take the good and listen to what they say good about you, you're going to listen to what they say bad about you. So, like, I embrace it all, whatever it may be. You know what I'm saying? The good shit, the bad shit, you got a voice. It's like, it's one of my favorite quotes from Jay-Z, what you eat don't make me shit. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, I recognize it. Cool. Thank you. Bam. It's your opinion. That, that That's all it is, is your opinion. The fans, it's we do it for the fans. So, whether you like it or not, whether you're, you're Latino or you're, you're one of my own people and you're hating on it, then I understand anger fucking resentment yeah. and not f fulfilling your own potential i know you ain't mad at me homeboy yeah. you're just looking at yourself in the mirror but you're actually taking it out on my fucking on my page which is cool dog you know what i'm saying i don't take it personal which is the toughest thing how I, I couldn't do that shit before no, I, i'm ready to it be seems like, like Fuck you, you. Have, you have a really really cool perspective man and you don't let shit bother you you're oh it bothers it. me dog no, it's but, just but, but i keep it, it and you, then you, i'll you're you have a way of dealing with yeah it. i'll call you bobby yeah. i'll be like hey dog this shit's going through my yeah. mind you and you'll be the You'll be the, the 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 calmer head that I'm able to talk. I yeah. talk to people, I trust people, and I let them know. Yeah. So that way, my reaction isn't based off of fucking anger or resentment. I'll be like, okay, cool. It's not about me. But that's a that's a badass perspective, dude. Like that's that's cool that you have ways to to deal with situations and and to, to continue to grow. You know, it's and and um, you know, we're proud that you're from San Diego. Thank you, know, you, thank and, you. And it's good that that you're still, you know, I know we know a lot of the the same people and and just um, you know, a lot of what you're saying is like you said, you're right here down the street, like a couple blocks right, yeah, right here. You're literally, from, I mean. You're from right here, you know. But um I notice all you dudes on the show, there's a lot of dudes that are fit as fuck. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? This dude comes in and he's solid. Like you get you're ripped, homie, and so is some of the other dudes on the show. Do you guys have like nutritionists or do you guys have I was telling my wife, I go, these dudes probably got a gym. They while they're waiting for their next scene, they're probably just working out and, <laughs> and doing it. Is that how it is? Or no, what, you what know, are you guys doing to to maintain you know, just to be be fit and take care of yourselves. For me, salads yeah. from the craft well, services. And a, lot, a lot of the guys are vegan. Yeah, some of the guys went vegan. Um, 
I'm I'm semi, I guess, vegan. I, I only eat chicken and fish. You know what I'm saying? Every now and then, red meat. But I've been working out, homeboy, since juvenile hall. So it's it's like brushing my teeth for me. Like I'll go crazy if I don't work out. Like it'll start fucking with me. I'll be looking at. I won't want to look in the mirror type shit. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. it's a psychological thing for me. Um, it's just it's ingrained your job in my character. Too, right? Yeah, which which has helped me now. You know what I'm saying? It's kept me kept me healthy. Um, but the first two seasons, see, because Creeper is a dope fiend. So I dropped 30 pounds when I walked on first season and then I dropped it again when I walked on second season. This time for the first time, we got all 10 scripts before we started. When I was able to see it wasn't about me and my drugs, I fucking was, no. I was like, cool, I could eat again. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and work out and get a little size back. Um, JD works his ass off. He, he, you know, I mean, he buffs out. He did us a, 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 a solid bro and got us a fucking gym and a fucking 18 wheeler trailer, you know, for us, everybody. Let's, I the, knew it. Let's <laughs> everybody, let's everybody work out, bro. Yeah, um, I knew it was so but like because that. of, but because of COVID, yeah, we can't. Yeah. You know, um, so there's a little weight set outside, but JD, you know, was like, he, he, you know, he went to bat, you know, and, and, Shout out to, to Fox 21, to FX, um, to Disney, to the mouse, you know what I mean? For taking care of us, for putting Elgin James in a position to actually let us tell stories the way that yeah. our people, and how you he, say. He's taking that input from you guys. Yes. Like, I think this should be played like this. I think this should be acted like this. I think this, this vocabulary should, should change a little bit and, and be used like that. Because our lived experience is truth and that's what we're trying to bring right. with the storyline is truth no matter if you come from the life or not there's some of us that do come from the life so we're able to give that hey this is what it is and he knows the life homie he's done time you know Elgin what I mean James Elgin what, James what's, what's, I don't, the, I'm not familiar friend? with look I know him up who, bro I know he he's did a writer they, I know he's they did he's a gangland they did a gangland on him bro no shit yes look it up Elgin James look it up right there so what? what's his deal he's Just, from Boston homie um Grew up and grew up fucked up, you know, dysfunctional family homie. Turned to the streets, man. Started his own gang, and that was it, bro. You know what I mean? And man, he ran amok for a little while. Ended up doing some Fed time, man. Did some uh, some great, great fucking. He wrote Lowrider, homie. You know what I'm saying? Like he wrote uh, a few beautiful fucking uh, documentaries, Independence, bro. And then he caught it. Got went back to this. Went back to the Feds. Came home, and that's when he. Created Mayans with uh, with um, Kurt Sutter, and the first two years it was them two, and now this third season, and you see the difference in the third season. I see the it's difference, all... man. I see the difference, and I I held on. You know, it's like there was a couple things in the first and second that I was like, "Well, yeah, it's all right," you know. But I'm 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 holding on because Emilio's a, a great dude too, and and yes. a friend, and one of the I'm, most humble men yeah, in the world, just a, a great great person. And, um, you know, I follow the homie too. And, and obviously you're on there and, and just, you know, you feel, you know, some other things. Uh, Christian Vera was, was just on it. Um, riding a motorcycle, swinging the machete. Yeah. Real, real good person too. Like real, just, you know, super, super cool individual. And, um, you know, it's, it, it's, it's something cool. I know you've, uh, so you've got some some things that some other projects that you're working on. You've got your changes possible project. Yeah, and then you you've started messing with music and and doing things like that. You want to talk about those <clears throat> those two projects? Yeah, the changes possible, bro. Um, I just want to you know to be honest with you, I want to use this platform to inspire our people. And when I mean our people, our people that come from pain, they come from poverty, they come from dysfunction. Even if you're rich, you come from dysfunction. You know what I mean? Like when I was busted, they, oh, it's only in the in the ghettos. Bullshit! Fuck I no. had my homeboys were rich. They're the ones that had the car. Some we had them, the fucking weed and the yeah. the broads. They, they were some of the that's most how we we're smashing. Fuck, pe fucked up people I know are are wealthy. Exactly yeah. because they're getting taken care of with a nanny. Yeah. Their mom's a doctor and dad's a fucking they lawyer. They don't the ever budget. see their they don't ever see their they fucking have money mom and dad. In their pocket to buy all the dope they want. Exactly, they got that void. They found the void with the homies, and that's how it was. And that's so like change is possible for me. It was gangs and obviously alcohol, but I mean, it, it can go into relationships. It can go into work, the work environment, um, dealing with people, uh, fucking, uh, homelessness, like change. It's so universal and broad. You know, my whole thing was just trying to be a beacon of light. You know, to instill hope into the hopeless, because I was hopeless at one time, because I believed in a certain cause and a certain um, faction of life that 
I thought I was going to do all day and this is who I was going to be, blah, blah, blah. You know what I mean? Because I didn't know anything else. And if I did, I was afraid to actually pursue it. Nobody told me it was okay until I would see sitting in the cell. I see the Emilio Rivera on fucking TV. I see Edward James almost on TV. You know what I'm saying? These guys let me oh, know man. that I can fucking, that I can make it. And I thought that gives, that gives inspiration. You know what I mean? And that's all I want to be now. And change is possible for me. It was, it was just the same. You know what I mean? They would tell me, oh, you're living proof that change is possible because all the shit that I put myself through. And I said to myself, well, if you feel that way about me, how can I help? Make that fucking just universal for the world. You know what I'm saying? And not just in Southern Cal, but in North Cal, fucking the East Coast, the West Coast, fucking Japan, wherever the fuck there's poverty and pain, wherever there's pain, homie, just to know that there's change is possible. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And that that's that's just where that's at. You know what I'm saying? I like right now I got I just have to find a legitimate fucking silk screen and embroidery <laughs> that I can fucking stay oh, on. Me. Like, know, that's that's, that's all easy. I need, bro. That's not easy, I'll tell you that. Like, that, we were just having that conversation this morning, and it's it's not, it's, but it's like I, a, I, like I, I got some here? ideas. I got some things that can help you out. You know, we'll talk about that when this is over. But, yeah, sometimes it's hard to find, you know, good silk screeners and, and people that stay on their shit and keep their word. It's kind of like a car painter. Car painter. Car yeah, painters that's what are first the thing biggest, that came to mind. biggest fucking liars I know. <laughs> Shout out to uh, my brothers, Manuel Cisneros. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> you know what I mean? And uh, Mercado. Uh, the Dalbas are the kings. Um, yeah. you know, my, in my eyes, but anyways, and, uh, you're working. So then that was the change is possible. Change is it, is, possible. is it clothing? It's a, it's clothing on a book or definitely going to do a book. I'm probably going to write a, uh, write a movie too. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I, I want to get into the writing. Um, just taking it slow by slow right now. I'm trusting the process and I'm focusing on just creating content. So with the music was when, when I wanted to write this movie, the music like let me, that was my first love. Like juvenile hall, why I would put stuff down on the paper. The paper didn't tell me I was a piece of shit. Was gonna die. Was was you know worthless. I was just put my pain down, and then I started spitting it sporadically. Mm -hmm. And then people would be like, "Oh shit, fool you! That shit's dope, dog." You know what I'm saying? Like, and I wanted to put out years ago, and I and I did. I put it. I recorded over a hundred tracks and never released anything because I was an alcoholic. I'd party in the fucking the the. uh the studio. fucking studio all night, you know what I mean? And I finished up great music with some great fucking people. Um, and I'm on this black and brown thing right now. You know what I'm saying? I've always been. No Color Lines was my first street tape that I never fucking released. Um, I got in good. You know, my boy Rask has pulled me in, signed me to re up. Oh, um, then Crooked Eye. Me and he Crook. comes through. He's a good dude. Raz real, is, real, real good dude. Raz, Raz is yeah. good people. Crooked is my boy. Crooked is hands down, you know, the realest motherfucker I've ever worked with, had the opportunity to. We partied our asses off on me. Um, and he's just a humble dude that's been through shit. Like crooked is they call him King Crooked now, but bro, that that's just I get all my 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 game and how to make certain moves in this industry through him because he was independent after death row and it, you know, he kinda got blackballed because of the death row shit in a sense. Yeah. So he fucking went independent and started putting shit out for free, which blew the world away. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And uh He's, to have him as a friend outside of hip hop is 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 a blessing. You know what I mean? Because um, I push that black and brown shit because I don't give a fuck about color. You know what I'm saying? Like I grew up not speaking Spanish, so I didn't play soccer, homeboy. But I played basketball, baseball, and football, and I'm, I'm a fucking athlete still to this day. I'm a fucking Did athlete, you ever bro. Boy, you ever break? I break. I used to break down through all these motherfucking See, things, homeboy. Out. So let me tell you something. So and you, this is this is the beauty of it of this that this i don't know if it's our culture this building the people we've had on the podcast every motherfucker pretty much has something to do with skateboarding oh so i skate i was a young as z boy bro that's, that's marcel I'm... johnson was my dog i don't know if you know marcel johnson bro he was one of the dopest little black kids out here I don't, I might. now he's oh, uh yeah 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 i think i i think i took pictures of him a long time ago dope as fuck he was young we were man from the civic center to, but, to fucking school you know, w to alcohol you're into hip-hop Obviously, you're in the, you know, motorcycles, that whole culture, but how it all comes together and, and that this, the energy is, is kind of like, it's organic. It's, yeah. and this is kind of the point of, you know, the, just what we're doing on this podcast and, and, and to bring to surface how we're all products of this Southern California lifestyle. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, obviously, you're in the hip hop, 
You know, it's like you're in the skateboarding, got a few tattoos on you. Yeah, you know, you know what I'm saying? Like it's all the same shit that we vibe on that that brings us all together, and and it's a it's a it's it's a beautiful thing. It is know? a beautiful thing. It, bro. It, it, it's good shit. So so that's the change is possible project, and hopefully we do you know get some more writing and then um, music. You just released something. Yeah, uh, born with less, man. Um, under living proof, which is L V N P R O O F one. One word live and proof um born with less man i t- i'm telling my life story you know through these words bro which people are are, are it's humbling to see the response from the people especially mm-hmm. they deal with the heroin they deal with the way the upgreen the upbringing you know what i mean because i try to put those words um poetically and not just as a fucking chicano rapper homie because i don't give like music has no color lines to me you know what I mean? A thousand fucking percent. You know, I don't care what color you are. You know what I mean? If that beat gets into my soul and those lyrics, you know, start to tap my fucking head, like I'm going to, I'm, I don't care what color you are. I, I feel the energy. You know what I'm saying? And that's what I do with music. Like I love music, homeboy. Like, and I've been writing like crazy. I got so, the EP coming out. Um, and then working on the album already right now too, bro. So the, the, I dropped Born With Less is the first track I dropped with the video. I just did What's My Worth. We'll be doing the video soon. And then I'm going to drop like four more songs Who's back to back. It? On those two was Scatterbrains out there with Jelly Roll and, uh, Struggle Jennings. Uh, they're out in Tennessee. Wow. Yeah. They're dope, 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 dope. They have like this, uh, all live guitar, fucking, um, flutes. Like, dude, it's, it's, it's a little bit of like the way I grew up, you know what I'm saying? With a little bit of fuck with hip hop and like some Beastie Boys and then, you know what I'm saying? Some, uh, uh, some of the, the police and, and fucking some Santana. Like yep. there's all a all mixture of, shit. yeah, you know what I mean? And you, you get that live instrument and not just the, just the bebop fucking beats, you know what I mean? So I can spit on, spit bars on that shit too, you yeah. know what I mean? But just that feeling of music, man, that flows into your yeah, vibe. It's just like, it. hell yeah. So that's what you're pretty much what you're doing with your, with your spare time now. You still going out on auditions. Uh, every audition is through, uh, uh, we do it through, um, self tapes now. So you send them in. Mm-hmm. You know, my, my biggest job right now is a father. You know, I got yeah. two, two beautiful girls. My, of course, my beautiful son, he's doing his own thing. Um, still I see him every, every other week, little less now only because he works so much. But my daughter Brooklyn and my daughter yeah. Evelyn, um, they're with me a week and then they're with their mama a week. So mm-hmm. zoom in the whole, the, this whole pandemic Think bro just living here in san diego living here in san diego in la in my house in la too so that i'm able to get them because they do zoom mm-hmm. so i'm able to get them for the week and then they come back to the mama for a week and with because of zoom so yeah. that allows them to do their schooling which is here in san diego to do it with me so that was a blessing you know not to take away from um you know all the losses that people have lost because this has been a real tough 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 time yeah you know amen to that my condolences to anybody who lost somebody but you know, and as a father, I was able to tap in with my daughters and be there in the most important times and to keep them safe, um, which has been a blessing to me, too. Yeah, man. It's, but um, I think we're going to wrap this up, man. What about you, Johnny? You got anything to add? No, it's a great story. Like, Sometimes like, we just got to shut, like, sh- no, you well. can't get them to stop talking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Can I, hey, I want to shout out, I want to shout out fucking Chacho and his wife, yeah. Hamma, bro. They're, congratulations uh, on the baby, Yeah, right? congratulations on the baby, That's baby right. Rivy, yeah. but also today's their birthday, bro. They share a birthday together. Do they? Yeah, dog. So today's their birthday, man. You know what I mean? And then, uh, wow. Le- uh, uh Leilani too, their daughter Leilani, but their new daughter Rivy too, baby Rivy. Yeah. Viviana. Shout out, big Chech. Yeah. Bro. First time I, uh, he so said to tell Bobby, he said, tell Bobby, I send my love. Love. Right on, He's, dude. I love Chacho. I, I remember seeing him for the first time tattooing out of his Lincoln, right? Yep. His Lincoln? Yeah, like, that the was fuck? at the Legacy yeah, show. The first yeah. Legacy show. He set up his Lincoln, had a badass Lincoln. I, I think he still has it. Still and, has um, it. He was tattooing out of the trunk yeah, right there at the Legacy the show. Shit. He set up his equipment. And then he did it again at Chicano Park, Chicano Park Day. Shout out Big Chech. Yeah. Right on. Fucking love Standard Chacho. tattoo. Standard tattoo Chula part Vista. Right. Chula Vista, Vista. Yeah. Okay, sorry, Johnny. Go ahead. Nah. I'm, always, I'm always fucking him off. <laughs> no, no, it was it, it was great to hear your story. Um Thank and you, then man. your outlook on life because the the interaction you you talked about with the with um the OG when you were locked up, I think pretty much like outlined what everyone should be thinking. You know what I mean? Don't let people's energy fuck with your energy because then they're winning, right? You you let them do whatever they want. But you'd be right with yourself, and it could get you on one of the better shows on TV, right? Now. Yeah, hell yeah. It yeah. Could, and it could get you as a, as a great dad or a great mother, yeah. you know what I mean? Or, you know what I mean, get you through college because you start to believe in yourself. 
when you believe in yourself, man, the power is within you, bro. You know what I'm saying? And whatever your higher power be on top of that, like, that's just what I believe, bro. You know what I mean? We don't get consumed with everybody else's thoughts. You know what I mean? Be aware that they're there. Yeah. You know, one of the, another thing you taught me was what you're not aware of will fucking control you because you're not aware of it. You know what I mean? Like, I wasn't aware that I was an alcoholic. Yeah, I didn't yeah. fucking drink every day. I fucking had a house and I had a job and I'm on TV and, and I'm not a bum. But it did control me and I wasn't aware yeah. of that shit. So when I became aware of it, I had the opportunity to make the choices to change that shit. Yeah. And that was another trick it from him that he gave me. Another blessing. You said something that made a lot of sense, too, when I got out of my own way. Yeah. Like, hey man, you know, I'm a I'm a self sabotaging fool, bro. <laughs> I'm that is 100 yeah. percent true, brother. I think there's a lot of people like that. Yeah. But so um, IG, what's your IG? People want to follow you on IG. What do they? What do uh, they follow? Joseph underscore Raymond underscore Lucero. Right on. Also known as Creeper. Creeper. On the Mayans, <laughs> Mayans <laughs> FX. Mayans. Tune in, man, every Mayans. Tuesday. Shout out, man. Shout out, Mayans. Our, my whole crew, man. Love you guys. Right on, man. Well, thank you for being here. Thank you, Bobby. Podcast. Thank you very it was much, a brother. pleasure. It, it was, was my a, pleasure. It was, it was a pleasure. We're proud of you, brother. Thank and you. And congratulations. You're Thank a beautiful you. person. Thank you, sir. And a uh, great story, man. Lord Left Podcast, 17th and Island, San Diego, California. My boy Johnny Be Good. The intro. Julian. Yep. Shout, Shout out Julian Ramirez, DJ Julian Ramirez, Tribal Click, Soul Assassins. We're out. Peace.